Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we've got a Satel match to show you. It's Saturday, the boys have just uh, played it and I'm looking now at the track view that was recorded. The match was between Grim Reapers, this is the 4v4 league, and against JTFF, who I believe are a French Swiss team now this is going to be a really weird one and a bit disappointing we just sat through and watched this for the last hour or so and we had a whole crew we had about 50 punters came in and watched it with us uh, we had uh, the my guys leighton bear squirtle the signore we all watched it together as a kind of debrief and recorded it and it was great really good fun um, really good comms everything however uh, for some reason my recording it just didn't record it just recorded a blank screen so I've got basically an hour recording with really good comms and the guys talking explaining their tactics and stuff like that and um it didn't record i don't know god didn't want it to record no idea why so what we've done is i've woken up in the middle of the night now and i mustn't be too loud and i've just i've decided okay you guys probably want to see it so i'm just going to re-record it again on my own I'm tired and I'm on my own, so it's going to be terrible to watch. But at least you guys get to see it, and I'll explain as best I can as I go. Okay, it's the best I can do. That's just life. Uh, right, we've got the blue team versus the red team. The blue team on round one are going to be JTTF. These guys, the Grim Reapers, down here in red. They're 250 nautical miles away from each other. There's a bullseye in the middle there and once you go within about 50 miles of the bullseye you can't go out until the match is over then after the match is over the winning team has to go and land to make it a final win okay so it's all about fuel consumption tactics as well as just shooting each other down i'm sure you all know this already they've chosen a certain weapon set or there is a certain weapon set in, in play which means each plane has maximum of six amram Bravo models as the most AMRAMs we can have and you can't have a uh, 9Xs which makes the optimal aircraft of course for this fight F-16 so everyone's F-16s in this case we've got Squiddle, Signore Ray, Bear, Leighton and we've got the uh, French Swish boys all F-16s we've got Marco, uh, Warhammer, Rafe and Gemini and the one I've just pre-recorded the one that didn't record properly we actually had these guys or Marco from these guys in chat as well talking through his tactics but again there's nothing I can do about it so that's the way it is right let's speed up get to take off and uh, see the boys off boys are up i've got a ferry of 125 miles each so i'll skip forward uh, to the combat of round one we're in the uh, zone of combat now 30 miles from the grim reapers and 41 miles from the blues so the reapers have an advantage well at least they've got there sooner i don't know if it's really an advantage or not blues are split, split north and south wing man pairs reds are split north and south wing man pairs Speed that up. Uh, the blues of north and south of the bullseye, where the reds have all stuck to the women pairs, but they've all gone north of bullseye. Okay, let's stop. Let's just have a little look at kinetics. So we've got bear. Late in wingman pair, Angels 33 to 38, uh, very fast, 800 plus knots. The other pair, Squiddle and Signore, 30,000, 30,000, 800 knots, so very fast. Blues, a lot much more conservative, 570 knots, so they're sticking on mil power by the looks of it. Angels 35, Angels 35, 7, wingman pair, very slow, uh, mil power presumably, uh, around 500 knots average. Angels 33, shots coming from wingman pair. Rafe and Gemini at uh, 27, so posture shots. We've got Bear aggressing 
a late and aggressing. Looks like we're going to get a pincer from these two wingman pair on these guys here. Okay, this will be easy dodges, obviously. A little bit close for comfort there, actually. There you can see it just flying over the screen there. Boom. Okay, left that one a little bit late. These are uh, the southern pair of the blues, Marco and uh, Warhammer. Look out, note how they always fire at exactly the same time, so they, they seem to time the way they fire, whether that's a useful tactic, I haven't got a clue. Uh, from Angels 33 at 500 odd knots, at Angels, uh, sorry, 25 miles or so. Squiddle at Squiddle and Signore, who are both cranking left about 50 degrees, 45 degrees by the looks of it. Uh, these guys have finished their cold leg, that's Leighton and Bear. They've got lost their heights from the dodges and now they're aggressing. Squiddle will pick up the pit bull soon and go cold. So it looks like it's an offensive crank. Uh, yeah, no, that's just notching now. Not taking any chances, so dumping the energy, I'm getting out. There's no point of taking any chances, even if these are long-range boss shots, that's all good. Uh, the fight is essentially reset now. Wingman pair on wingman pair with about uh, 20 miles between. So all is normal at the moment. Blues have kept their shape a lot better. Really good wingman pair. I mean, actually everything is about the same. Uh, they've kept their energy good at 30,000 plus, although they're fairly slow. These are at around 30,000. And my bug. I just, they didn't record, so I've just recorded, got re recording it on my own real quick. Shouldn't be half an hour. Okay. Oh, she's in here. Oh, <laughs> all right, yeah. Watch out. Yeah. Um, the trading blows. This guy's got himself in a bit of trouble. Gemini is a bit late dodging, but there's such long shots, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, good shape otherwise. Now, this is interesting. Signore switched and Squirtles a switch from fighting these guys to pincering these guys, which I think is a good aggressing technique. This guy may have got... I told you he was a little bit slow dodging that. He may get in trouble. No. No, it's okay. Uh, these guys have dodged. They'll be aggressing soon. Uh, this overlapping pair of Signore and Squirtle, now they've changed their mind. They've gone for these guys, as they should. Uh, we've got a pair out from the... From the Frenchies, as expected, uh, 12 miles, so the shots get more and more dangerous slowly. And these guys are going to be turning away Angels 22. My boy is much lower, or at least uh, Signore is. However, a lot faster. Reds have been faster throughout. One bad thing of that means that they're burning a lot more fuel. Uh, that energy's got to come from somewhere. Not sure why Bear's gone really cold really far. Not sure what that tactic is. Um, got a notch there from Signore, just making sure he dumps those missiles and into a canyon just to make sure, which is good technique. <laughs> Absolutely make sure that you've beaten those missiles. Fight is essentially reset again. Blue's holding their shape better with a good separation between wingman pairs of 20 miles. Reds have kind of got all jumbled up, really. They've lost their shape completely. Um, however, you can tell the reds are much more aggressive because look where Bulls is. Um, and the average to fight center is 20, 30 miles that direction from towards the blue side. That means the reds have basically pushed blues out by 30 miles. Remember, if you go out of the ring, there's a big ring here at 50 miles radius, 100 miles diameter. If you go out, you, then you lose. So it's a valid tactic for reds to sumo wrestle the blues out like this, which they're doing. So blues holding their shape, patient, good fly, all round flying, conservative and organized, but reds much less so, uh, using a lot more fuel, taking more chances, etc. But pushing blues out, so depends how you're fighting style. Lots of missiles out now, so we've got these two are now alternating hot and cold. I think this this pair here, Warren and Marco. Uh, Signore is in for a shot, ten miles. All these dodge, he did it on a cold target, and all these missiles are going to be easily dodged anyway. So it's just notch that. It's going to be an easy. I don't know, we'll see. It's going to be closer than I thought. Yeah, it's dodged that, no problem. These two boys cold. Uh, Squiddle is hot, so you got a mini chainsaw, but these two boys, by the looks of it, we've got Layton. Not sure what his game is, but he's detached from these pair and coming back down here. 
Um, so these seem to, seem to be working in a trio, and I don't know what that's all about, but that's just how it is. And Bear is just doing, maybe a possible tactic is Bear is keeping these two busy, while these push three on two. That could be a tactic. Or it might not be a tactic at all, I don't know. But look at the look how far the Reds have pushed, though. The centre of the fight is now 35 miles, and these guys are right on the edge. You know, six more miles, they get pushed out and sumoed out. So... Uh, the Reds definitely winning the fight in terms of overall tactic. However, look at the Blues' perfect shape. Everything's perfectly organised, perfectly good, and they, they've probably got tw twice the fuel of Reds as well. Uh, good shot here from Rafe. 11 miles on Signore. Signore is very low. One good thing about that is it will be easy to dodge, fingers crossed. And Signore's got a habit of firing on cold people. There's no point in firing on cold people. You can't send them cold because they're already cold. And you definitely ain't going to hit them. So it's a bit of a wasted missile, personally, I think. Um, again, I think it's just the same problem. Now, interesting. Look. Look how it's changed. These are working now. They're working as a trio against these two. It shows how much better Blues are keeping their shape. Whereas now, Squirtle's on his own against these two. Which is a dangerous thing to do. For Squirtle, that is. Um, otherwise, no kill shots have been fired yet. Everything's been posture shooting. Ah, now, finally, the Blues are trading their shape for a kill. Uh, what's happened is that they've spotted that this guy's alone and we can take him. So this guy's turned the burner on 850 knots, dumping all his altitude, dumping everything to get a shot in, uh, which may work out like six miles away. So his Marco's going in to kill. So they've been very patient and kept their shape beautifully. And now they're taking the chance. Squiddle is running away, as he should do. Now, what this Marco's done is forced ACM. The problem with forcing ACM is it becomes a 50-50 who's going to win this. And he's lost SA. You can see he doesn't know where this guy is because this guy's below the radar uh, coverage of the AWACS. So it's now become a visual fight. And this is interesting. Um, this guy's come in. Warren has come in to back up Marco. But a Leighton's come in and um, uh, taken him down. So he's neutralised him. While... Signore pushes these two back and Bear is going to come on, come in and be useful for something. So really good, really good uh, setup here from the Reds. That guy's neutralised. Those are neutralised for now. And it seems that Squirtle has got the upper hand on Marco here. Or maybe not. No, he hasn't seen him. So these two guys are trying to find each other. So Ignore may have bitten off more than he can chew. No, he's got the upper hand on these guys. And I think it's down in a ravine as well. So the fight... Oh, some guy just died. Look. No, he didn't. Sorry, my bad. Uh, so the fight has worked his way down, as you would expect, from 40,000 feet all the way down to here. And no one will be going back up, I imagine. Just how it is. Uh, Marco's turned in, and we have a dogfight. Whoever can see the other guy first will win. Missed. Both arm rounds have missed. Looks like Squiddle's extending and exiting. On, oh, yep, he is. Well, what Squiddle's going to do now is going to exit, hide in the terrain, and call in an overlap. But what he doesn't want to do is go and dogfight this guy because, like I said, dogfight's 50 50. Instead, he's going to run away, hopefully, dodge that missile, and use the overlapper or Leighton to come and do the kill. Fingers crossed. There he is. And now Marco has had to go cold. Oh no, look at that. That's an unexpected thing to see. I don't know, I guess Marco just lost. I think Marco realised he was up against two and bailed. Now the one problem with bailing is he's not got his afterburner on and he's going to get caught up very quickly. So a little too conservative, I think. Oh, and he's down. Right, first bud to red. Um... It worked. The tactic of full of... Oh, we've lost a red. We've lost a red somewhere. Someone's done something wrong. I don't know what. Um, so it's three versus three again, which is a bit annoying. So... You'd say here, reds forced a mistake in blues. And a mistake was made. And obviously, reds have made their own mistake somewhere. I don't know who's died and what reason. But there you go. Uh, we've got an aggression from... Uh, what's his name? Where's this thing's gone? An aggression from Warren here... 
However, it's very slow for an aggressor. Um, it's on the TW. Mm, he did a TWS shot. Oh, hello. Ping. Oh, really good shot there. He just ran into it. He just he just lost situational awareness and went in for it. And uh, these guys dodged successfully. So another error there. And this is going to favour the Reds now. Bear has forced ACM on these two guys, which is an interesting, uh, if not rather brave tactic. Squiddle's going to have a problem dodging this. Where is it? Where is it? Followed him over the hill. That's missed. Bears forced ACM with these two boys. They've got confused trying to find him. This is the thing about ACM. It's anyone's game. Anyone could win this. First guy to be in the right place at the right time. It's a missile out there. Who's it going for? Gemini's dead. And as he dodges. With train blocks. And I don't think he's going to. Dead man. Boom. Great work. Uh, still a 50-50. I would have expected Rafe to have picked Bear up by now, but... Uh, three on one now, so it's going to be a win unless Rafe can really sort his stuff out. Bit of a needless teapot there. Rafe sees him. Ben needs to pull into the dogfight now to. Uh... Oh no, he doesn't have any missiles, look. Right, okay. Bear needs to just run away or run into his friends and get Squiddle on the overlap for the kill now. Hits. Bear's hit. Not down. Bear's got his burner on in trying to neutralise Rafe and Squiddle's going to come in for the kill. Got to be careful about tracking a Fox 3 in there though. Got to wait for the opportune moment or an aspect where a Fox 3 is not going to be dangerous for Bear. Okay, he's the fight. He can probably shoot now. There we go. Oh, I thought that was going for our guy. Boom, dead. Uh, that is a win from GR. Um, Bear, I think, runs out of fuel. Squiddle and Leighton go out back and win. Uh, return, and that's a win for GR. Let me know. The, let me load the next round up. Standby. Pickles. Okay, welcome back, Valley viewers. Uh, this is round number five. <laughs> Swap sides. So Reapers are now at Soshi in blue. To get straight into the action, just out of time to make pretty graphics today, I'm afraid. So off we go. A lot more discipline from um, Grim Reapers, you can see, in terms of flying. It's not needed at all, but just what I like to see. Okay, Reds are more on their game today, a bit more. So uh, French are a bit more on their game because they've got here equidistant. Split into a north and south pair. Reapers are forcing the fight. They're split into their wingman pairs, but they force forced the fight to the north for whatever reason. Probably just trying to upset the Reds, and the fight's on. Let's do the kinematics check. Standard 35 mile posturing shot. They're at Angels 34, 37 at. Very slow again, very conservative. We're going to have just put up with Pickles, maybe in the background, I'm afraid. Got to uh, look after her for the time being. Um, right, uh, Reapers. A little bit faster, 650 to 700, uh, 34 to 36k with the rear pair basically the same. So the first pair of posturing shots are out. Uh, a little bit of an error there in that one's gone for that pair, one's gone for that pair. Uh, pair out on these two here from Leighton Bear pair. Notch this sort of turned away. These guys have realised that they've been cut out of the fight, so they're going to come in from a push from the south. We've got overlap, we've got overlap pairs, Signori and Squiddle. 
Pickles, please. Blues are kind of lost their shape already. Red's lovely shape. Blues are all kind of chucked in together. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. As long as they know where each of them are. They can be in the same airspace. Okay. Pottery shots out from Pear, Marco and Orima. Uh, a bit more dangerous. 23 odd miles. And they're at high. 36-35. We're down low because we've done dodges with this pair. 22-17. Shots out now from Bear. Oh, and Pickles is on my lap. Thank you, Pickles. You're going to come and watch, Pick. Come and watch. I know you want to go out, but I have to stay in here because your mother's told you that. So just stay, please. Right. So what we've got now is these guys have turned back in. They're aggressing now. Um, we've had a change of pairs. Leighton's now paired with uh, Signore, so they've changed pairs dynamically. Uh, Squiddle is now paired with Bear. That's an aggressive shot. Hang on. Pickles is just eating my leg. Stop it. Stop it. Um, Signore is aggressing like he does. So he's pushed these two back. and he's, These two haven't responded. Yes, they have. They have responded. Uh, these guys are uh, being very conservative. But again, just holding their shape down there. Uh, dueling with these two. Looks like Signore is going down this canyon. It's going to force, possibly force an ACM. We'll have to see. And Leighton's on the, on the cover. Distance is getting dangerous now at 14 miles. Looks like we're going we're flanking from the north squiddle here. And it's going to force ACM, which is a cheeky little... Yep, it's coming up this ravine, look. Really good situational awareness there. It's going to come and pop this guy from the side. Uh, while this guy's also under fire from this guy. And this guy... And the um, bear is going to handle these two himself by the looks of it. So just keep these two busy while these guys threesome that guy there. Um, you see Squeak Signor is using his, the situation awareness, the Link 16 from the AWACS on the F-16. And this guy's got wires to it and is running, but this is a great idea. Forcing someone into um, forcing someone into ACM if you can get on the back of them is great. Although he's probably not going to kill him because he's seven miles away. This guy, you can easily force him into an error or a tactically bad position. Uh, let's check, especially if you're, you can panic him with a missile shot like that. We can. So Rafe is 700 knots. Signore is 850. So we've got a delta 150 knots. So this guy is just not being fast enough, basically. He's going to get caught up by uh, Signore. Have to get faster. He's got his fuel tanks on. While Signore has sacrificed everything, to going for speed. So much more aggression there again from GR. Hang on, we've lost a blue guy. No, we've lost a red guy. Ah, yep. I think I remember from first time watching this through. Uh, one of these guys just just got hit by a posture and shot. Um, just just an error. Just an error. That's all it is. Uh, Butterfingers, just a, just a bad error. And sort of saying about if you force the ACM, you can force a mistake, especially if you can keep control of it. Um, like like Signor I did there, just had everything, it just had everything going for him, which is great. And it's going to be now just a case of mopping up, I imagine. So Marco, there's not much you can do against an overlapping pair. Although Bear seems to have lost situation awareness. I guess Marco's down and low. You can hide in these uh, canyons. And you also disappear from data link as well. Because you're not visible to AWACS. Let's see if this guy's hiding as well. And he is. He's just jettinged in his bag. I was about to complain about that. These guys have managed to find uh, Marco. I don't know how they've done it. Because they don't have Link 16. But... They've just found him somehow. Um, they haven't found Gemini. So it's going to be all over. For Marco. That is a missile in his face. And he survived it. Which is unusual but possible. Another missile. Oh god damn it. How many missiles are there? Seem to have missed again. And a third missile. And these two are fighting. I don't know who to look at. That's going to... Ah, careful. Yes, good dodge. Oh, we got we got Marco there. 
Four against uh, Gemini now. And that is game over if we've not even pushed him out. No, we've not pushed him out. Merge. Anyone's game now. The French guy has lost situational awareness. He's lost, uh, he's lost the fight. The dead man. Boom, got him. And that's the end of it. It's best of three, so Grim Reapers win that against JTFF. Uh, my synopsis, I don't think, or my um, summary, I don't think Rim Reapers flew much better that round. I think uh, JTFF, and I'll probably they'll probably agree, just flew worse. They they did really well in the first round. They kept uh, they just kept the wall together really well, kept everything really well organised. This time, just a couple of errors. Uh, one guy got hit by a lazy missile up there, the kind of missile that you should be dodging day in day out. Um, this guy here just got forced into ACM and just again an error uh, he crashed into a mountain whereas what he could have done is called his friend to come and overlap and take Signori out Signori would have had no way to defend that so it's just worth playing from JTFF which they did agree when we talked to them sorry that we couldn't do a proper video with all the proper comments and all the guys that's just the way it goes sometimes otherwise at least I hope you enjoyed seeing the match uh, the guys do go home and do a uh, cool formation landing now but I'm not going to show that because I've really got to get to bed look forward to seeing you on the next round.